today we are gonna talk about trailer right. come on man hurry up fuck should we yeah of course i mean yes We've got hundreds of films pushing back their release dates because of the closed theaters around the world, and I'm assuming we'll get to watch The New Mutants in roughly 45 years. N no, but I found myself watching the trailers over and over again for those films that got delayed, and I was happy enough imagining myself in the theater in the near future. But the more I watched, the more I grew uneasy, because, well, what if they suck? What if the films turn out to be nothing like the trailer? You wanna play games, motherfucker? And to say that isn't a stretch, because trailers nowadays are more than just a promotion. They have their own league and frankly their own story, independent from the films they're advertising. Of course, it wasn't always like that. The very first trailer shown in an American film theater was in 1913, and it was a short promotional film made with actual rehearsal clips for a Broadway musical called Pleasure Seekers. The idea was quickly popularized and soon there were promotional videos in every theater. But unlike today, they were often played at the end of a film, hence the term trailer. And they often just listed the names of the cast and crew, followed by a couple scenes from the film, and when sound got incorporated by the late 20s, voiceovers were added to the mix. I am privileged to say a few words to you in this most modern and novel manner. Things stayed pretty basic for some time with those typical intros, mannerisms, and Windows Movie Maker transitions. And even when they did get creative, it was stuff like Alfred Hitchcock's video for Psycho, where he gives a little tour of the set. Clever. Whatever the method, the goal was clear. Advertise the film and tease the audience. A teaser trailer. But as you could have guessed from the fact that we now distinguish between a teaser and an official trailer, things aren't the way they used to be. Today these trailers have become so important in marketing the film that they often give away too much information. Plot points, punchlines, even twists and endings are included in these trailers and they have become something we wish we could live without, but really can't. And ultimately they force an expectation that is often separate and unrelated to the actual film. A good example is when Nicholas Winding Refn's Drive came out in 2011. Many were outraged by how different it was from the trailer. The film itself is a masterpiece, but because there was a false idea planted in those who watched and liked the trailer, it got a huge backlash. In this case, it's not just that the trailer showed too much, but that it showed too little of the film's actual atmosphere. They used like 90% of the film's dialogue in their bad move and completely got rid of its unique retro vibe and instead filled it up with generic action scores and sequences to create a totally different film. And what is up with these unnaturally slowed down clips? <sighs> Anyways, the wish to simply attract as many people as possible has overpowered the need for an authentic portrayal of what the film's going to be like and feeding that vicious cycle is us who got more than used to trusting the trailers and judging the books by their covers. So with these overblown promotions and overly dependent consumers, I asked myself, well, what could make a trailer good? In fact, what is the best trailer out there? I'm gonna keep my top pick for later, but let me share some trailers that I think are worthy of the top positions. Take a look and see if you can connect the dots. First, most recently, Logan comes to mind. It described itself elegantly with a perfect selection of clips, the editing was on point, music and the visuals accurately told the atmosphere of the film, and they relied on the actual lines spoken by the characters without the use of cheesy text overlays. At the end of the day, the film itself was just as good, which is a plus, but the trailer walked the line beautifully so that everyone knew exactly what they were getting into without feeling like they've already seen the film. Going a few years back, I would say The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo has an awesome trailer. This one took a slightly different direction from Logan. It has no voiceovers or dialogues and only uses hard cuts matched with the music to quickly show small sections of the film. It uses cutaway shots to direct our attention to the right place and the flavor of the film is effortlessly understood by the end. What I really like about this one in particular is that it uses a text to describe the film near the end. But it only tells us that it's an adapted screenplay and that it'll be out by Christmas. Whoever knows the book already knows the plot, so this trailer works fine. And for those oblivious to the trilogy, there's now an understandable excuse for this unique execution of the trailer. 
Not to say that the trailer didn't show anything, because it totally delivers the basic vibe of the film. After all, isn't that what trailers are all about? Another David Fincher film that has an excellent quality trailer is his 2010 work The Social Network. Same thing, excellent music choice, nice pacing, attention-grabbing edits, perfect number of scenes that reveal the film's direction without major spoilers. Okay, by now I hope you're sensing the trend here. I'm not gonna get into the rest, but if you take a look at other good examples like 2009's Watchmen or 2014's Godzilla, you'll be able to learn that a good trailer will always be balanced. Yeah, balance is good, but what kind of balance? Looking back at the drive example, number one would be authenticity. You can't make a trailer pretending the film is a 90s romantic comedy sitcom when in fact it's a philosophical discussion of love, emotion, and memories. They really slaughter this one. Of course, if the film is a complete disaster, you're not gonna force the studio to say that the film is shit in the trailer, so there's a line to that. But it needs to be reasonable within the context of a rational promotion. The second thing is information. You don't want to have too much of the film spoiled in the trailer, but you want enough information to make sure the viewers get some sense of what the film's about. And by that, I mean the basics. The mood, the setting, and perhaps a bit of the premise if it's got an extremely complex narrative. But that's pretty much all you need. Depending on the film, you might not even have to say anything about the actual story. It's harder to give an example of a trailer that messed things up by showing too little, but the opposite is very easy to show. What have you done? That's perfect right there, and... Yeah, don't do that. The last thing is the quality of the trailer itself. The correct pacing, editing, and scoring of the clip will be essential in capturing the viewer's attention, as trailers usually last only for a minute or two. For the sake of the argument, I'm gonna say that trailers that are way better than the actual film will not be counted as the best trailer ever, going back to the importance of authenticity. Huh? Combining all these factors, I think this is the best example. If you can tell what this film is already, then you're probably on my side. If you don't know, this is Ridley Scott's classic sci-fi horror film of 1979, Alien. Stop right there. This trailer is 2 minutes and 5 seconds long and we're already roughly at a minute mark. All we've seen so far is a space and an egg cracking open with the title Alien floating above. That's three things if we count the title of the movie. But notice how much information those three things give us. We already know everything we need to know about the film. The clip begins with an intense music featuring drum kicks that resemble a pounding heart. We know it's not a comedy. It's set in space and presumably a baby alien is gonna be hatched out of its egg and kill everything in sight. That's already better than most of the trailers out there, but see what happens next. After this heightened introduction, the rest of the trailer presents a series of short, intense moments of the film that one simply cannot understand without watching the actual film. But what makes the second half of the trailer beautiful is that they aren't random. The first couple clips focus on this woman running through a tunnel in what we think is a spaceship. And a bunch of cutaway shots are used to give us a quick glimpse into how there will be a group of people involved in this journey together. After this has been established, a new set of clips that tell separate urgent stories intercept the cutaway shots. Of course, there are still other unrelated clips of the film that are inserted in between to tell us that the situation is incomprehensible, painful, and perhaps scary, but the focus is now on this cat and these people. We follow these storylines in confusion as the music intensifies until everything leads to a climactic doom A perfect ending with a perfect tagline. What do you think? Don't we have a clear sense of what the film deals with and how intense it will be, but without the knowledge of how it gets to that point and where it gets to after? Whatever. We know enough to be excited, but not enough to understand. I don't understand. I, and the sky, and the sea, everything, it's a set, I it's a show. So what happens? We want to watch this film. 
And that's a perfect trailer. Thank you, as always, for watching my video. I had so much fun making this one. I love sharing films and meeting new people who love films, so feel free to talk to me on Instagram if you have any questions or if you have any movies to suggest. Uh, I can't promise I'll answer right away, but I'll try to find my time and answer you when I can. Anyways, I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and until next time, that's it for me.